today on Beloved Women. Our miracle won't be an untouched, safe, perfect life. Our miracle will be that we made it through the lion's den alive, the fiery furnace unsinged, the trial in our right mind. We made it through the divorce still with joy and the financial loss still provided for and the hurt and pain still loved, the crisis still with hope for tomorrow. Today's video is brought to you by The Beloved Boutique, an online shop for Christian women to find the resources they need to consistently make time for God. Our journals, planners, Bible studies, and more are designed to help you connect with God in simple, practical, and meaningful ways. Start shopping now at TheBelovedBoutique.com. All right now, we are almost completely armed. We've buckled our belt of truth. Our breastplate of righteousness is in place. Our feet are fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace. We've taken up our shield of faith and put on our helmet of salvation. We have everything that we need to protect ourselves from every attack of the enemy. The only thing left to do is fight back with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is called sharper than a double-edged sword. On one side, it protects, and on the other, it cuts down our enemy. It's called the sword of the Spirit because the Word of God is divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. If we don't hold to this truth that God's Word is alive, active, true, and not just some random book written by men, we will not be able to effectively use this weapon and forfeit the benefits of God's Word in our lives. God's Word teaches, corrects, and trains. God's Word sanctifies us and sets us apart for His special purposes. God's Word gives us direction and guidance. His Word fulfills and satisfies us. His Word gives us life and keeps us from sin. With all these benefits, the Word of God is something we need to keep close and ready to use at all times. Have you ever seen an action movie and the scene is calm but tense? Then all of a sudden someone flinches or looks the wrong way and everyone pulls out their weapons. People are pulling out guns from their backs and knives from their socks. Weapons coming out of nowhere and everywhere and everyone is ready to defend themselves. When it comes to an actual weapon, whether it's a sword, gun, or knife, there are three things we must do in order for it to be effective. We must keep our weapon ready to use, keep it close, and keep it hidden. The same is true for the sword of the spirit. Let's talk about each one. First, we must keep the word of God close at all times. Don't wait until times get hard and you're under attack to reach for the word. Be prepared in and out of season. Don't get ready, stay ready. When Joshua was to lead the Israelites into the promised land, he would have to fight the people that were already living in the land in order to acquire it. In his instructions before leading the people into the promised land, God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success as we study read and meditate on God's word we're keeping it close next we must keep our weapon hidden Psalm 119 11 says I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you to go even further than reading and studying, it's always good to memorize scripture. One of the first scriptures I memorized as a child was 2 Timothy 1.7. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Every time I'm attacked with fear, this scripture comes to mind. It's deep in my heart and reminds me more than fear, I have love, power, and self-control. Every time the enemy comes to me with fear, he gets this bullet of truth. And the more you shoot at your enemy, eventually he has no choice but to retreat. Like a sniper, keep close the scriptures that speak most to your battle. Strategically use God's word to fight your battles by keeping his word close and ready to use at all times. Last, we need to keep our weapon ready. In any combat, you don't just take a weapon to battle for style. You better have every intention of using it because if you don't, your enemy surely will. So we use this weapon best by not only reading and studying the scripture, but actually living it out. 
This is where the real power comes from. The enemy doesn't care how much you read the Bible or study scripture as long as you don't practice what it says. He too knows the word. He used the word of God against Jesus when tempting Jesus in the wilderness and you better believe he'll use it against us as well. So yes, studying and knowing scripture is how we pick up our sword of the spirit, but living what it says is how we use it to harm our enemy. James 1, 22 through 25 tells us, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he is like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds real cute, Christina, but the hardest part is living out the word, which is why when Paul instructs us to pick up the sword of the spirit, he doesn't end there. He adds we should be praying at all times in the spirit with prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. We can't pick up the greatest offensive weapon, the sword of the spirit on our own. So we continually pray for God's help. Prayer is our connection to God that ignites his power in our lives. When our sword is plugged into God through prayer, we have unlimited power to overcome the attacks of the enemy and defeat him. So we can have on the full armor of God, but if we don't have power to use it, it's no good. Our power comes through prayer. Paul tells the Ephesians to also pray for him. Paul didn't need the Ephesians to put on the armor of God only for themselves. Their victory meant his as well. Someone in your life needs you suited up today. Your husband, your children, your coworker, the person that you will randomly bump into on the metro this morning all need you to have on the full armor of God. And even as your sisters in Christ here at Beloved, so do we. Someone else needs to see the victory of the Lord in your life so they too may be reminded and encouraged not to give up. Now, I know you think this is it. We've put on our belt, breastplate, shoes, we've taken up our shield of faith, put on our helmet, and now we have the sword of the spirit that is empowered through prayer. But we have one last thing to do. The last thing to do is the first thing we were called to do in the first session of this study. Stand firm. Our mission is not to be perfect. We will make mistakes and incur some losses. Our mission is to not give up, get back up when we stumble and to keep standing. Our victory is keeping the faith in the face of crisis. Our victory is believing God when our feelings and circumstances are telling us to do everything but believe. Our victory is praying the same prayer year after year after year with a stubborn faith that our God will answer. Our miracle won't be an untouched, safe, perfect life. Our miracle will be that we made it through the lion's den alive, the fiery furnace unsinged, the trial in our right mind. We made it through the divorce still with joy and the financial loss still provided for and the hurt and pain still loved, the crisis still with hope for tomorrow. In this world, we will have trouble, Jesus tells us, but he has overcome the world. So take heart, suit up, and stand firm. Finding the power and strength you need to stand firm in your faith can be achieved through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Our sin, however, prevents us from having that relationship. Since God is holy, he cannot allow sin to go unpunished and the result of our sin leads to death. But God still wants to be in relationship with us. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place. Yes, he really loves us that much. That's why we are called his beloved. Now, instead of death, anyone who places their faith in Jesus as Lord of their life and savior from their sins will be saved. I invite you to begin a relationship with God through faith in Christ by praying this simple prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I am so sorry for the things I have done wrong in my life. 
I ask your forgiveness and now turn from everything which I know is wrong. Thank you for dying on the cross for me to set me free from my sins. Please come into my life and fill me with your Holy Spirit and be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this amazing journey as we learned what it looks like to put on the full armor of God that we may stand firm in our faith. For more resources from Beloved, please visit belovedwomen.org or download our free app in the Apple or Google Play stores. Thanks again for watching and until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved. For even more encouragement from beloved women, including daily devotionals, practical advice for everyday Christian living, Bible studies, and more, be sure to download the Beloved Women app available for free in the Apple and Google Play stores. Today's video is brought to you by The Beloved Collective, a membership site for Christian women providing guided video Bible studies, printable study guides, and online community to help you connect with God in simple, practical, and meaningful ways. Join today at MyBelovedCollective.com.